Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's not me and today we're discussing the muscles of the orbit we've already discussed the orbital boundaries and the contents of the orbits and today we're going to be uh, focusing on the muscles that exist within the orbit and the eye movements they cause the overall muscles they are voluntary and involuntary muscles of the orbit all right uh, when i talk about the voluntary muscles i want to remember they're divided into broadly into three categories the first are the recti then the obliques and then there is this uh, others category the recti category includes a superior inferior medial and lateral so superior rectus inferior rectus medial rectus and a lateral rectus easy then we have the obliques are just the superior inferior so superior oblique inferior oblique then the others we have this muscle uh, called the levator palpebris superioris the importance of this muscle is that it has a role in also the involuntary movements via its superior tar tarsal part and uh, it is attached to the upper eyelid and it causes the elevation of the upper eyelid these are the voluntary muscles involuntary muscles are three the first is superior tarsal we all know it's a part of the levator palpebris superioris and the superior tarsal muscle causes elevation of the upper eyelid then we have an inferior tarsal the opposite of the superior tarsal it may cause the depression of the lower eyelid and finally we have the orbitalis muscle its action is uncertain so these are the involuntary muscles so let's go ahead and discuss the depth of the voluntary muscles first i'll talk about the origins of all of these muscles the first part in the origin i want to remember so suppose this is a superior orbital fissure it was lying at the junction of the roof and the lateral wall right here this is the superior orbital fissure do you remember there is this common tendinous ring of zin via which all the muscles will originate so this is how this ring comes into play like that from this ring all your recti will originate the superior rectus inferior rectus medial rectus and lateral rectus how the superior will come from the superior part of the ring inferior will come from the inferior part of the ring medial from the medial and lateral from the lateral part of the ring so this is a common tendinous ring of zin or common annular tendon which is passing through the middle part of your superior orbital fissure this is the origin of all the recti muscles let's talk about the origins of the superior and inferior obliques superior oblique is uh, arising from all the way posteriorly lying supramedial medial to the uh, optic canal from the under surface of the lesser ring of the sphenoid your superior oblique is going to uh, arise it is known as a superior oblique that therefore its origin is superior whereas the inferior oblique is coming in from inferiorly from the orbital surface of the maxilla bone just lateral to the lacrimal groove which was lying in the medial wall if you remember it is actually lying in anterior margin of the orbit the origin of the inferior oblique and finally levator palpebris superioris arises from the orbital surface of your lesser wing of the sphenoid bone all right so now that you know the origins of all of these muscles these are the common tendinous ring of zin this is coming from the under surface of the lesser wing supramedial to the optic canal this is coming from the orbital surface of the maxilla lateral to the lacrimal groove and finally your levator palpebris superioris from the orbital surface of the lesser wing and your superior to the optic canal let's talk about their insertions all the recti are going to go ahead and insert into the eyeball now the eyeball has important part the entire whiteness of the eyeball is known as a sclera anteriorly there is this part you know there is this colored part that is known as the iris the opening within the iris this tiny opening will be known as the pupil and this entire iris area is covered by a thin membrane called the cornea all right recti muscles are all are going to insert into the white of the eyeball into the sclera of the eyeball so superior rectus will uh, insert in the superior part inferior in the inferior part medial in the medial part lateral in the lateral part these are the simple insertions right now let's talk about more important insertions especially in the superior oblique is coming all the way from behind from the lesser wing what it does it comes in the front and i've talked about the trochlear fossa located in the roof in its entro medial part right about here the superior oblique is going to be uh, pulled by this there is going to be the trochlear area which is going to form a pulley for the superior oblique tendon and the superior oblique tendon will run laterally backwards and get attached to the sclera just behind the superior rectus so what was the superior oblique uh, insertion it comes all the way to the trochlear fossa then runs laterally and gets inserted into sclera just behind the superior rectus muscle so it comes like from the medial area and it goes all the way laterally and gets inserted right here all right that's the superior oblique whereas the inferior oblique comes from from the medial side a little medially in the anterior margin of the orbit this also goes laterally and gets inserted in the sclera 
Greater palpebrae superioris gets inserted in the upper eyelid. So these were the basic uh, origin insertions of all of these muscles. And I basically gave you a summarized version of the origin insertion. I did not go into much depth. I think even knowing this much is quite enough for you. Let's talk about the movements of the eyeball. All right. So I want you to remember the movement is always going to be like perpendicular or at right angle to the axis of the movement. So this is these are the axis that I've made. This is the transverse axis, this is the vertical axis, and this is the anteroposterior axis. When we talk about that transverse axis, the eyeball around a transverse axis has its movement of elevation and depression. So you can see this movement is at right angles to the axis. So the first movement of the eyeball is the elevation or depression. Next movement is around a vertical axis. Vertical, so, so the movement has to be at right angles. So this is right and left movement or the abduction and adduction uh, we all know what that means abduction means moving away from the nose adduction means moving towards the nose then we have this anteroposterior axis coming from behind forwards all right I, uh, obviously i couldn't like draw it that way the important movement that occurs here are known as the torsions these can be in torsions or x torsions the torsions are basically understood if you see this is the eyeball suppose and this is that hole of the pupil right Intorsion is like that, whereas extorsion is like that. So this is the intorsion extortion movement. And now our goal is to understand which muscles are causing what. But before I talk about those movements, I want to get one thing out of the way, the nerve supply. The nerve supply of all of these muscles is the third nerve, the oculomotor nerve. However, there are two exceptions in this case, the LR6 and the SO4. Remember this formula. This is the lateral rectus, only the lateral rectus is supplied by the sixth abducent nerve, whereas the superior oblique only is supplied by the fourth nerve, the trochlear nerve. So remember this in these nerves and a rest of all of the muscles that are excluding the lateral rectus and S, uh, superior oblique, all are supplied by the third oculomotor nerve. Now let's talk about the movements. Remember all the muscles except for the medial and the lateral rectus all the muscles have uh, movements around three axes whereas the medial and lateral rectus only it's easy to remember their movement and this is just uh, literally related to their names this causes medial medial means moving towards the nose which is adduction so medial rectus causes the adduction of the eye whereas lateral rectus causes the abduction of the eye right so that makes complete sense now let's talk about the superior rectus. Superior rectus is going to perform movements in three axes. Overall, the superior rectus, what do you think it will do? Since it's superior, it causes the elevation. And another thing that the superior rectus causes, the superior inferior recti will always cause adduction, additional, meaning close to the nose. So these will always cause the adduction. And always remember, the superiors will always cause in torsion all right in torsion so now you know the movement of superior rectus is if the eyeball is elevated and lying medially you know that the superior rectus is performing its action the superior rectus has around a transverse axis it has the elevation around a vertical axis it has the adduction all the superiors will always have the in torsion around a anteroposterior axis next muscle that comes to play is the inferior rectus now you're just going to reverse all of these movements and since it's inferior it will obviously cause the depression of the eyeball along with that i told you the recti will always cause the adduction and finally inferiors since superiors are all doing in torsion all the inferiors will do extorsion all right so this can be displayed by an eyeball that is looking down and medially so this is caused by the inferior rectus. And then we have the superior oblique and inferior oblique. The confusing part in superior inferior oblique is that although their names are superior inferior, their actions are going to be otherwise. This is These are the only muscles that their actions are going to be completely opposite to their names. Since it's superior, it will cause depression. Since it's inferior, it will cause elevation only in case of these obliques. It's very easy to figure out that the superior oblique will cause the depression. It will cause obviously opposite to the recta, it will cause abduction. Both the obliques will always cause abduction. Remember that. And finally, since it's superior, it will cause what? The intorsion. So these are the three axes. This is the transverse, vertical, and anteroposterior axis. In case of inferior oblique, figure this out. I want you to do it yourself. It will cause the elevation, then it will cause the abduction because all obliques do abduction. 
and finally all inferiors to the extorsion when the eyeball is moving downwards and laterally you know superior oblique is coming into play and when the eyeball is moving upwards and laterally the inferior oblique is coming into play so these are the individual movements now if we talk about combining these movements so it's quite obvious that if a person is looking toward let's suppose to the left side right so the superior oblique of one side and the inf the opposite of the other side will be coming into play inferior rectus all right and similarly let's suppose this is the action and this is obviously the inferior oblique because it's causing the abduction and it is causing elevation and in this case this is also causing elevation so superior rectus and it is causing adduction so obviously superior rectus this is fitting well so always the inferior oblique of one eye means the other eye will be using its superior rectus so you're just making that opposite when it comes to combined movements in cases where the eye is lying in the middle no adduction abduction then if you want to look up both your, your elevators will come into actions these are the inferior oblique plus what the superior rectus and if you're looking downwards in the uh, middle no no adduction abduction then your depressors will come into action the two depressors are the superior oblique and the inferior rectus so i really hope that this makes sense this flow chart take a screenshot of this to make sure you memorize it so guys that was all you need to know about the movements of the eyeball i really hope you understood the lecture do not forget to click on the subscribe button thank you so much for watching